Hello guys, I'm back. I'm gonna be doing this uh, uh, from mounted to a pot video of on, on these two orchids here. Um, but before we go through that, I just want to show you guys something here real quick. This is my most prolific bloomer in all my orchids or basically all my plants. This just this is Strepia falconbergii. Um, just keeps on. Um, producing flowers for me non-stop um, and then uh, when I got this from uh, Andes Orchids it was on a 2 inch pot transferred it on the 6 inch pot and just just uh, gone crazy for me anyway um, back to these guys here um, these are both mass divalias when, La when Land Diana and the Nidifica on the right uh, the when, La when Land Diana has bloomed for me once um, but uh, didn't provide more blooms uh, in the and this website it would say uh, it's a uh, a free flowering all throughout the year uh, cloud forest vibes has a same orchid and uh, it's it just blooms for him non-stop um, the thing that I've noticed though um, in this part of my pro tent again I have like microclimates in this real tent um, down here temperatures uh, maybe around 68 to uh, um, 68 to maybe 72 Fahrenheit um, and um, humidity is bit like really around uh, 70 to 90 or even more uh, because um, it's pretty humid down here because a lot of moisture loving plants down here um, but since this is mounted it gets dry real quick so I, I water my plants or all my orchids every other day um, but still um, in the website and this orchids website says don't let them you know dry um, and I know uh, too, too wet would also be bad for orchids but one thing I noticed is it's starting like for this Wendla and Diana it's just starting to grow and like there's a lot of these roots now however um, it's it's getting to a point where it's not in contact with any um, moss and uh, because of that um, it gets dry um, and uh, even worse for this Nidifica here um, doesn't have that much um, moss and I touched it earlier before I watered these plants and they're, they're, they're dry not really dry damp but it, it's not not doing well for me I mean it's growing but it kind of plateaued um, the, some of the leaves are actually dead so I'm, so I'm wondering if it's because it's getting too dry now um, I researched online and a lot of um, the resource online shows that it's uh, they're potted another example here is this spot here since it's been growing this area um, needs more moisture so I don't have enough uh, um, uh, sorry uh, sphagnum moss in this spot um, so it gets dry in between waterings and I figured if I just repot this um, I don't need to worry too much about it being damp all the time because I've done it on these two uh, moisture loving, loving plants and I just water it like like I flush them real good once a week and just a bit of spray on the top of the moss just to get also the I have uh, some some live moss on it and they're growing so just to keep it uh, humid but uh, I only water it once a once a week and and, and they're doing really good uh, same with this uh, muscifera this uh, Restrepia muscifera same thing so I think uh, for these guys here I, I will need to pot them I mean they I, I like the look of uh, mounted plants but um, I guess for both of this uh, they need um, more surface area for the roots to grow and uh, more moisture so uh, again this is just my first time I'm pretty confident because um, at this point I've seen moisture lo loving plants thrive here in a pot and I, I think I think they will I think they will good, do good so um, I'll get them prepared and uh, yeah, we will go through 
uh, the repotting and, and taking them off the mound so this is also my first time doing this all right all right guys so uh, before we go and uh, remove the orchids from the mound I just want to show you um, the pot and the mix that I'll be using um, so this is just a regular uh, I think it's a yeah, three inch pot mesh pot um, and then uh, this is the hook um, I made a video about this um, this is actually used to um, um, hook Christmas lights on gutters and uh, it works really well in my grow tent and then also uh, if I want to mount um, plants in the on, on my uh, aquarium um, and uh, so yeah I got two prepared here um, and then here's the mix that I'll be using it's just uh, uh, long fiber fibers sphagnum moss and perlite I don't have an actual percentage of how much sphagnum moss and how much perlite um, but um, yeah I use I'm using rainwater I use rainwater to uh, moisten this sphagnum moss um, and yeah this is going to be an airy uh, mix um, basically what I've noticed with my grow conditions in this area here it's high humidity it's uh, cooler temperature um, and it's perfect I mean again um, that is uh, the restrapias all doing really well um, but I guess um, once the roots uh, but uh, with uh, I'm sorry but with the uh, mounted uh, orchids um, that requires lots, lots of moisture um, it still tends to get dry but not as bad because of the high humidity but but with what I researched online and what which made me uh, decide to finally repot or just pot them is that the roots um, need to be damp and um, will have more vigorous growth if um, they're more damp so that's why I'm gonna be repotting the two masterbellas so um, with that said um, I'll get things set up and then uh, we'll this is my first time to remove a, an orchid from a mount so um, yeah so wish, well I mean wish me luck <laughs> okay thank you bye hello guys so pardon my setup here this is I guess the best I can do um, uh, that I'm able to video what I'm doing at the same time I'm able to see it through the camera um, and then part in the background my kids are watching TV and I bought them a happy meal um, so they're a bit excited um, anyway this is the Mastavelia nidifica um, and these orchids and uh, yeah so I can see also uh, some leaves are dying off I think I gave too much of the maxi although it's one for strength um, so I'll uh, also um, make sure it's more of a foliar spray not too much um excuse me um, okay with that said uh, yeah let's let's start I have in here um, alcohol um, to disinfect the stuff that I'm I'll be using I have uh, a scalpel here uh, uh, scissors and uh, yeah we'll see how we're able to do this and um, hopefully um, I'm kind of, I'll be successful um, yeah, the uh, Mastavella Nidifica had really uh, had a ton of growth for me. Um, however, um, it hasn't really um, uh, bloomed um, from the website. It says it's a uh, free, uh, free flowering all throughout the year, um, but uh, not in this case so far, at least. Uh, the when Landiana did um, produce. Uh, Two, two blooms for me so I'll just uh, get rid of the uh, bad um, looking uh, leaves so yeah. okay. then there's some there's growth there's still growth here so um, oh I think this is a new like like maybe a cakey but uh, yeah I won't be separating it um, but yeah let me just get rid of the leaves 
So I, would, I really thought about if I need to do this, but um, yeah, it does get, uh, especially with the temperatures now, not nowadays, uh, it's uh, spring and uh, we're close to summer here in Texas. Um, and we're, we're also trying not to uh, use the AC. I mean, our AC is like around uh, 72, 73. You don't want to get any lower than that uh, because uh, it will, our electric bill will cost a lot. So here we go. So I think I've taken off the bad looking leaves. And uh, yeah, uh, well, let's start uh, with this one here and see how I'll be able. I'm hoping that since it's a bit grown in already, if I take off the fishing line, it will go with it. So, no, it won't. So, hmm. so let's remove the fishing line first. The plant, as I think, the roots has already. Uh, got itself established so let's see I can pull this off all right so I guess this will be more complicated than I thought um, but that's all right at this point I guess I can't back out <laughs> all right <clears throat> that will be use okay okay let's see Oh yeah, some roots have already stuck on the the wood. Um, as you can see here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh there you go. So that was fairly easy. Um, but. Um, by the looks of it, um, I think it's a really good idea to get this uh, in a pot because I've had this since um, what's that? for a couple of months now. Uh, let me confirm when I got this plants, but basically I've had this for a while and the the roots that I have, can see here is not that much yet so maybe um, being mounted is not uh, and in, in my grow conditions for this specific orchid um, doesn't really provide enough moisture that it needs um, let's take a look when did I get this point so I got this uh, January January 4th so yeah more than more than a month more than like five months now and uh, that's the growth all the growth I had so I think uh, that is a good idea to uh, get this potted so yeah let, let's get this potted here okay okay so I showed you guys the sphagnum mix I uh, I've prepared so here we go I don't think I need to I mean there's, I don't think there's not anything special with the with how to do this um, so I'll still use the uh, the part um, I mean I'll still use the moss the moss part of this uh, plant and I'll do it this way and I hope that it will like the leaves will try to uh, they will eventually move like they, they will try to face where they g will get more sunlight so all right and I don't want to bother whatever roots are remaining so I'm gonna leave it like that oh so that's a, not a good idea here we need to do it this facing this way there okay this okay. so that was fairly easy um, I was expecting uh, a bit of resistance in terms of the roots that have established itself but as you guys saw there weren't there isn't much roots and uh, I guess uh, 
yeah now I feel uh, a lot better knowing that I think I did a, a good decision to get this guy potted and hopefully with this kind of a substrate it will uh, it will produce better roots and of course uh, if that happens uh, better um, growth for the plant so all right so it's basically it that that this is the way I'm gonna pot it um, hopefully um, once it gets a bit established it will the, the leaves the stem will try to find uh, where more sunlight will get and it will move but uh, very optimistic about this one so we'll we'll move with the, the next plant all right guys so so far the first one was a success so we'll move on with the uh, to this one the uh, Mastavalia when when land Diana um, I guess uh, well, we'll find out if it will be more complicated but as you can see uh, it's got more roots here um, and here so it and it's kind of a uh, attached to the wood already so uh, yeah we'll see but uh, kind of uh, um, uh, gave me more confidence with that first one so uh, yeah so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, I've already um, uh, sterilized with the alcohol um, this is uh, the, well, the stuff we'll be, that I'll be using so let's just go ahead and cut the uh, cut the fishing line. Fishing line. All right. All right. Let's see. Um, with the night difficult, they were pretty easy to pull off, and I think this is the same. But I guess some uh, could have been stuck now with the roots. So, but yeah. Able, able to pull it off I mean this is impressive on how ants orchids uh, mount their plants uh, they're really well done oh and the other thing is um, I don't know if you guys see this but there is this kind of growth on the moss so I will try to preserve this and see if I can I can still grow this um, it looks a different kind of moss for me so looks cool so I'll try to grow it um, all right so okay let's see where we can start here oh okay oh my god <laughs> all right uh, I, I, yeah I, I, I destroyed the roots um, uh -huh. okay <laughs> that was kind of unexpected but Oh uh, yeah, I broke some of the roots here. Um, yeah, we'll just cut this here and then disinfect with a little bit of alcohol. That one looks good. All right. Um, so this one um, has more new growth compared to the Nightifica. So from the website and from what I've researched, um, this is a warm loving plant. I think the Nidifica needs more, more cool temperatures. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm just checking the plant out, but it looks good. Um, I'll cut off the spikes from the previous bloom. Alright, so we'll get this spotted now. Um, so far, so good. Um, I was kind of expecting things to be a bit complicated. Um, let's see. And when I put sphagnum moss, I try not to uh, make it too packed. Uh, too, yeah, tightly packed. Um, so how can I... I'm not really sure what the strategy is for this one, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll do it in a bit like this way. That way I can also preserve that moss there and hopefully um, get it to grow. All right. Okay. Okay. 
little bit more of moss here, spread the moss. I won't cover that uh, specific moss that I saw. So I don't know what the right term is. Um, uh, what 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 kind of a uh, uh, process plants do like when you plant them a certain way and they try and they and their stems and their leaves uh, move towards where they get more light so I don't know what the process is just like a, a sunflower right but uh, I'm, I, I hope it does uh, it does uh, move to a, a better position in terms of its leaves um, but yeah I'll be pretty simple that's it and uh, I have another plant that I want to actually this one is more of a propagation instead of repotting so yeah I'll, I'll get back to you guys all right so the last plant is the Restrepia dudsonii this is a um, um, continuous bloomer for me although it kind of uh, had a short break bloomed again and now haven't really shown new spikes um, it looks good on this wood I mean I you can see all the root growth here up to here um, but what I'll do is uh, this part of um, I don't know if you guys can see it this part of this orchid is actually a new growth and I'm thinking I'll I'm not sure if this can be considered as a cakey, but uh, I'll try to take it off and plant it in a uh, in a mess uh, mesh mesh pot, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll work on. Uh, hopefully, it grows and do as well as the uh, Restrepia falconbergii. So uh, let's see. I've been studying this uh, specific plant for a while uh, earlier and I just want to see where I can go and um, uh, make the incision um, so let's do the let's disinfect our stuff first all right okay all right so I feel I can feel that there's like a, a bark in this area here and I will need to go through a lot of roots so I hopefully I don't kill the plant but I still have the mother plant here so I'm not that concerned but yeah I'll cut some of the roots here So this plant is, has really um, established itself because I can really feel the roots are well well stuck there. There you go. So yeah, I think I can plant this area here and uh, hopefully uh, get a more yeah look at look at all those roots. So yeah, this this plant is doing really well. Um, I hope that uh, when I re when I pot this, this will grow as good as the Restrepia, which I planted in a six six inch mesh pot, and uh, it took advantage of that extra space because it came it, it came in when I bought it, it came in a two inch pot. So yeah, that was pretty easy. Um, I'll just disinfect the spots where I cut the roots. I mean. I don't know if this is the right way, uh, but uh, <laughs> for some people, do disinfect um, the 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 where they cut their plants. Um, but I haven't seen people do it on an orchid. But I'll do it anyways, just to be sure. Um, all right, so I'll need to uh, set up the pot because uh, I only prepared too earlier. So I'll just pause this. All right, guys. Since I already have you. Uh, since I'm already doing this video, I'll just show you how I uh, modify this uh, mesh pot. So I do a cut here, I remove this spot here, and then a little bit of an incision here. Alright, and uh, 
grab this. Okay, I'll give you this way. And hook it like that. And that's it. Alright guys, that was pretty easy. So, let's add the sphagnum moss. Okay, so far so good. Um, I was expecting uh, that it will be a bit complicated, but... Uh, uh, that was uh, so far fairly easy um, all right so and regarding potting these orchids I mean I've watched several videos already um, so and uh, pretty straightforward um, let's see how I want to move this um, all right uh, this way all right. So I try not to pack it too tightly though. Um, I still want um, good um, airflow uh, for for these plants to try properly or not to not to get too soggy. Um, when when a uh, orchid is potted, I soak it only once a week, um, and then every other day I just uh, spray on top. But that's it. Um, not too much. And so far, that has worked with my uh, Wistrapia uh, Falkenbergii and the uh, Muscifera. Um, all right, I think that's that's it. I mean, okay. So yeah, this is done, and I'll I'll put them in the tent, and I'll uh, well, guess what? I'll I'll just show you guys um, all that uh, I've done here. Okay, so yeah, so so far so good. Um, this is the first time I've actually uh, removed an orchid from its mount and then uh, potted it. Um, I'll do an update definitely and see if this is successful. Um, I really wish it is because I really like these plants also. Um, the Wendland Diana um, has really has unique uh, flowers uh, which I really like and uh, hopefully by uh, uh, repotting it it will produce more leaves more growth and of course more flowers um, but, and this one hopefully would uh, like the repot and uh, um, produce those flowers um, and of course the uh, that sony eye so uh, what I'll do next is I'll put this in the grow tent and uh, I'll, I'll show you there where, where I where I'll place them all right all right so yeah here are the three orchids that i repotted or yeah repotted and uh yeah so in this area they'll get a lot of humidity from my uh humidifier here there's another one here but it focuses more there but eventually this whole tent will be uh, misted um so yeah so and uh, and in temperatures maybe around 70 to 72 to 74 um, so I uh, yeah so I hope they do well um, again this is the first time I've uh, removed a uh, orchid from a from a mount um, so f uh, I can say it was pretty easy for this ones uh, I cannot speak of course for all orchids especially the one with uh, bigger roots like this one this is the uh, the Acahendersonianum or Asco, uh, it's already called the Ascocentrum Hendersonianum and I have a spike actually and it's got uh, two spikes two spikes there yeah there's two spikes um, when I bought this from Heil Sermon um, they said it will take two to three years it's a seedling it will take two to three years to bloom but uh, I don't know is it my growing conditions is it the maxi I really don't know but it started to have really good growth and then uh, those spikes but uh, yeah just showing you guys um, orchids with large roots I don't know if it will be as easy um, especially this um, dendrobium um, where the roots really has gone through uh, the crevices of the wood so uh, uh, this is where the Dotsonia is uh, placed um, so the mother plant um, so hopefully it doesn't get it didn't get stressed too much 
So uh, yeah, that's it guys. I appreciate the uh, subscriptions and the uh, likes. Um, I know I don't have the best videos as you can see or hear um, in the background are my kids. So I just try to make the most of the free time I have and uh, just want to share uh, what I do uh, in this hobby and at the same time this is uh, again a way for me to log um, how, what I do and I watch my videos maybe the next two or three years I'll go back and uh, see what I did and uh, um, maybe improve the techniques or um, maybe there's something that I missed and uh, learn from that so uh, that's it guys thank you and uh, have a good one